In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. All writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing to full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from critiques of the short story through to the line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's bio for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services. Nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 
a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Is debt beating you down? You need discipline. You need the Debt Ninja. If you've been caught in a financial trap and need to be set free, then you need the Debt Ninja. Want to stop those harassing collection calls? Start saving thousands in interest and fees and get out of debt fast? Then you need to call the Debt Ninja. The Debt Ninja will find the best companies across the country that will help you consolidate all your bills into one easy payment, reduce your payments by 30 to 50%, and get you out of debt fast. If you have unsecured debt of $10,000 or more, such as credit cards, loans, or medical bills, call the Debt Ninja for a free 15-minute consultation. Call 800-826-1246. 800-826-1246. That's 800-826-1246. Call today. The Debt Ninja. this promise to the American people. If you like your doctor, you will be able to keep your doctor, period. If you like your health care plan, you will be able to keep your health care plan, period. This is the most transparent administration in history. Not even a smidgen of corruption. Fact is, we had four dead Americans. What difference at this point does it make? If you've got a business, you didn't build that. Keep on doing what you do, Rick. You're my favorite host, favorite host, favorite host. It's time to hear the truth about America's biggest challenges. You're listening to America Off the Rails with your host, Rick Robinson. Hey, thanks, Michael. Checks in the mail. All right, folks, this is Rick Robinson. I'm the host of America Off the Rails. It's Thursday night. That's right. We're one day away. We're one day from Friday. Just a couple. Actually, at this point, it's, what, about 11, 12 Eastern? So we're about, by the end of this show, it'll be Friday, folks. You're there. It's right before you. The day we all hate, the day we all wait for, the day we all hope for is finally here. Sadly, it's not election day. Not this year. All right. <clears throat> so anyway, um, last several weeks, I've been spending a lot of time on Donald Trump. And every time I think I'm going to start trying to move away from Trump, something else comes in the news. I made you guys a promise last night, though, that uh, the next couple of nights we will be focusing on Hillary. And I probably will start doing that more often. Uh, start trying to split it up maybe a couple nights on Trump, couple nights on Hillary. Try to see if we can get somebody from the libertarian side of things to come on. Uh, talk, hang out, maybe give us a little bit of hope that maybe not everything's gone to hell. Who knows? But, um, of course, we are on KLR, klrnradio.com, our new home. Now, if you like what we do here, there are, a couple, there are a couple of different ways that you can help us grow. First of all, if you like what we, what you do, here, what we do here, sorry, tell your friends. Let them know where you're spending your time. Let them know that we're out there. Also, if you... Uh, can't necessarily donate directly, but you like some of the, the products that we offer when we do run commercials, um, make sure you're interacting with those sponsors. That's another way that we can get money. And if you'll notice, there is also a donut, a donut, 
Good Lord, I cannot talk this evening. I'm so sorry. Maybe, well, I, I did have a steroid shot yesterday. Remember I told you guys that? So now I'm like eating nonstop and maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm craving a donut. That, that could be it. They donate button of the page. Uh, there is no amount too small, no amount too large, but if you can give even just a buck or two, something to help us keep the lights on around. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we made the business decision to uh, step, or I did, to step down from K98 Talk and start a new platform because this one is actually a registered uh, platform with legitimate call letters. The call letters are KLRN-DB. Uh, DB stands for Digital Broadcasting. It's uh, basically just means it's a web-based radio station, kind of like AM, FM, but it's digital broadcasting. But it is actually a a registered call lettered radio station which is not something that we were doing with talk because honestly I didn't know that existed so it's just another way that we have found to add a, an air of legitimacy around here um, because our layer of legitimacy not an air um, see again can't talk yeah I did an hour before I did this last night it went really well but I think that was because I was completely hopped up on the steroid now it's really starting to kind of wear off so I'm Kind of feeling like I'm stumbling around a little bit, but I'll, I'll get my feet under me in a second. Um, now, as far as, again, for tonight, we're going to be spending most of the night, actually probably almost all of the night, talking about Hillary Clinton, some of the crazy things she's done, some of the crazy things she said. i uh, got a few clips. You know, we've got, you know, the YouTube video, you know, and her promising and standing in front of the parents of the slain from Benghazi. Don't worry, we're going to get the one that's responsible for this. We're going to get the guy that made the YouTube video. Everybody by now knows it's not a YouTube video, but she managed to get away with that. We have the uh, the recent uh, comparison between what Hillary Clinton said she said and did when it came to the email scandal and then the FBI director basically breaking down what actually happened and point for point for point for point for point she wasn't being honest and yet somehow it's still not enough for her to face any charges everybody calls Donald Trump Teflon Don I'm thinking we got the Teflon pointed in the wrong direction because by my, recollec my recollection she's been getting away with crimes for a very very long time and so has her husband and yet somehow she is now the Democratic nominee for president and let's not forget how shady that whole convention was you know anybody remember when Donald Trump first announced and all of a sudden they were like oh my god he's paying people to go into his rallies he's offering $50 a seat he's offering $50 a seat to put people in the chair. Well, guess what they did at the DNC convention after they locked out the majority of the Bernie Sanders supporters. Now, of course, there were some Bernie Sanders supporters that were allowed to stay because they were the ones that decided to toe the party line, but the hardline Bernie folks were actually asked to leave. And then they put an ad in Craigslist offering people seats in the Democratic National Convention for $50 to come sit in the chair sign a non-disclosure agreement and root for Hillary people were being paid $50 to do that and yet when Donald Trump did it the media went nuts Hillary Clinton does it not so much now I don't agree with the fact that Donald Trump may or may not have been paying people to fill his rallies either but if we're gonna be talking about that let's not forget the type of hoops you typically have to jump through to get into either the DNC or the RNC anyway or well at least the RNC I know specifically you can't get in there without an ID and typically the only people that are at the RNC are usually delegates or media so I am assuming that the DNC works exactly the same way so all of a sudden they were selling seats to perfect strangers for 50 bucks when everybody else had to jump through hoops to get there. Interesting concept, folks. Now the scariest thing about Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump is he has managed to stick his foot in his mouth so many times over the la this last week that she now has a 19, I believe, 19 point gain over Donald Trump 
in favorability. He's negative 26, she's negative 9. Now granted, they both still have negative favorabilities, but before this last week, they were pretty much neck and neck in their favorabilities, and so were the polls. Donald Trump had managed to close the gap to Hillary Clinton, and in a lot of polls, was actually starting to pull ahead of her, and then he started shooting himself in the foot. Now I want to remind you that he was starting to pull even with her, and then he started shooting himself in the foot. I submit to you folks that the Hillary Clinton camp knew exactly how screwed up her campaign was, all of the different things that were going to come out, and the Donald Trump campaign has been a plant. Again, he spoke to Bill Clinton before he decided to run. Coincidence? I don't believe in those. So why is Hillary bad for America? Because if what I'm saying is true, I want you to let this sink in for a second. That means that two parties were conspiring to make sure that Hillary Clinton got to be the President of the United States. If you are that twisted and that sick that you're willing to do whatever it takes to put yourself into an office like that, then we don't need you there. That's why I've been saying all along both of them are bad for the country, but nobody's paying attention paying attention to the not so subtle points here. Look at it every time. think again she's very terrible for America because she will do whatever it takes to become president of the United States and she's proved that this election cycle whether you want to admit it or not it really is just about that simple and let's not forget the fact that not too long ago Hillary Clinton was telling everyone how she couldn't in good conscience support the Iran deal now all of a sudden she's supporting the Iran deal. Big surprise. The same Iran deal that joshing earnestly just came out uh, with a statement from the White House uh, press room the other day uh, talking about how the $400 million that was given to Iran might actually be used for terrorism. Um, did you really just say might? Let that sink in for a second there, Mr. Earnestly, and I know that's not your real name, I don't care. Let that sink in for a second. We gave $400 million to an enemy territory. Somehow this was a good decision. This was a right decision. This was a just decision. Those are all the different things that you're hearing about in the media, but they're not talking to you about the fact that we don't typically negotiate with terrorists. The fact that we negotiated with terrorists, because that's what we did, violates a lot of the agreements that we have and a lot of the different standard precedents, precedents for presidents. Sorry. Again, trying to talk, not working so well. Now, what are some other things that make Hillary Clinton uh, bad for being president of the United States? Anybody who does this at a campaign rally? <laughs> Probably not a good choice for president, just saying. Any to go after. Look, I'm as big a fan of all of this, you know, 
revolution for new clean renewable energy sources is everybody look I grew up watching Star Trek I grew up thinking that that would be like the perfect society because nobody had to work they wanted to work and on paper it looks really good and I've said that before but we're not to a point where we're ready to be that type of a society the problem is we are slowly removing all of our jobs that is another thing that either Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump is going to continue to be responsible for. And I don't think that either one of them are the right choice for the job, which is why I myself will be voting Libertarian, but I'm not telling you who you should vote for. I'm giving you my opinions. Look, folks, that's going to be the, the difference with me. If you don't attack me directly, I will likely never attack you at all. I'm not going to make fun of you for wanting to vote for Hillary. I'm not going to make fun of you for wanting to vote for Trump, unless you're someone that I've known for a very long time, and then typically I make fun of everybody anyway. Um, but if it's just over who you're going to vote for, all I'm trying to do is understand who you're going to vote for and why. Have you thought it through that far? Because again, and I say this a lot lately, but if, but if you can go stand in front of a mirror, close your eyes, take a deep breath, count to 30, open them up, look in that mirror and tell yourself that so-and-so is my best choice for president of the United States, and you don't cringe or run, run away screaming, then you have probably made what is the correct choice for you. See, that's the difference between liberalism and conservatism. Liberalism, they want to fit everybody into cookie cutter platforms they want square pegs and round holes they want round hole, round pegs and square holes they want everybody everything in its place and everywhere every all the time and that's just the way it's supposed to be everything's supposed to be just this little perfect white pickle white picket fence world and we don't have anything to worry about if you really stop and look at it that's what the liberals are doing they're trying to force us to fall in line with their way of thinking. Hillary Clinton is another one that has done a lot of this. Again, go back to the YouTube video. How many times did she lie about that damn YouTube video? How many times did she say, I didn't send any classified information on my email server? And I know, I know, I know, because I keep seeing this stuff coming up. Talks about how Carl Rove deleted emails and so-and-so he deleted emails. So-and-so was using a private server. Look, I don't agree with it then either, but I wasn't involved in politics back then. I was still in high school when most of those things were going on. So were a lot of the people that I see posting the memes about how this happened way back when and nobody did anything about it. I just, I don't understand how we got to where we are today. Because we are literally, and I said this last hour, but I'm going to say it again. We are literally basically a coin toss away from either pulling the lever for crazy in one corner and someone who's criminally insane in the other now again I want you to let this sink in look what happened look at the people that were on my side of the aisle we had 16 of the best and brightest that I have ever seen not necessarily all 16, but we had the best and the brightest in our movement on those two stages. And we blew it. But the point is, folks, it's not over yet. The election's not over till November. The swearing in's not until January. We need everyone who was a Trump supporter who is not a Trump supporter anymore to get involved in the Rescue America movement as well as find ways to, to reach out to other folks and make sure that you're letting your voice be heard. Because look, I've seen more and more people shying away from Trump. Some of you are still on the fence, but there's still time. The same thing is true for Hillary. There are so many of you that are on the fence. There's still time. 
Look, folks, for the first time in my lifetime, we have about 60% of the American population that doesn't want either one of the two front-running candidates. They just don't. So I want you to understand this is the perfect time for us to finally band together and realize that the only way that we're going to make anything different is to actually finally try to change something and vote for a third party option. Otherwise, we are going to wind up being stuck with either Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. Neither one of those people is viable in my opinion. Now, I spend a lot more time on Trump, because, but that's because there have been some flashlights shown in some very dark places in my formal par former party, and there's some house cleaning that needs to be done. So yes, I spend a lot of my time focusing on that, because right now, with me talking about Hillary and bashing on Hillary, I honestly feel like I'm preaching to the choir. Whether you're a Trump supporter or a never-Trump supporter, you know Hillary is bad for America. Most of you who are Trump supporters don't see how bad Trump is for America. So yes, I will talk about both of them. Yes, I will talk about why each one is equally bad for America because I don't necessarily think one is any worse than the other. They just have different degrees of worseness and they kind of balance out. And it really is that simple. Each of them is equally as bad as the other, but they're equally as bad in different ways. So it doesn't really matter because either way, we are screwed. If either one of these people become the president of the United States, we're probably done. We've been lucky to survive the eight years of Obama because that is not for lack of his trying. Look at all of the different incidents that have come up with the with all the different terrorist attacks that have happened under Barack Obama's watch. And you're telling me that you think Hillary Clinton's going to be able to do a better job? She was Secretary of State when an ambassador was killed. A sitting ambassador. A sitting ambassador was murdered while she was Secretary of State. And then she goes out and starts talking to folks about this YouTube video stands in front of or talks to the families of the fallen and tells them that they're going to find the person that was responsible for the death of their sons because of a YouTube video, etc., which is a load of crap. I mean, it really is. It's completely insane that we have gotten to this point to where we, we are literally looking at one of three our one of three options being the president of the United States and the libertarian candidate who wants to put, to smoke pot, which I'm not necessarily opposed to. I've, I've never really done it on my own, at least not, and realized that. I mean, I've been around the secondhand smoke when I was younger, but had no idea what it was, but discovered that it makes me sick. So I have no real inclination to legalize not telling everybody else that they can't if they want to. I just don't have any desire to. So the fact that our best option right now is a former Republican who talks like a Democrat and ran as a Libertarian, I'm a little scared for our future. On that note, folks, we have already hit about the bottom of the hour, so we're going to have to take a really quick break. When we come back, more stuff to talk about right here on America Off the Rails. listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. All writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing to full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from critiques of the short story through to the line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. 
We also offer assistance on generating a writer's file for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. All right, folks, we are back. We're live already into the last half of the show. Apparently, I've been having a little bit of technical difficulty. I think we managed to get it buttoned down while we're on the break. Now, we've got a couple other stories that I definitely wanted to touch on. I think, again, um, I don't know. I mean, I I can't reiterate this enough. We are literally watching a dumpster fire that is our election cycle. And I know I say that a lot, but at this point, we are typically, we are seriously looking at either electing a criminal or someone who's criminally insane. Speaking of criminals, and it just kind of lets you know just how weird things have gotten, uh, this is from Reuters. FBI FBI employee pleads guilty to acting as an agent of China. And this was by uh, Nate Hammond, and this is from Monday. Uh, an, an FBI electronics technician pleaded guilty on Monday to having illegally acted as an agent of China, admitting that he, on several occasions, passed sensitive information to a Chinese official. Uh, Kun Kun Shan Chun, also known as Joey Chun, was employed by the Federal Bureau of Investigations, had been since 1997, pleaded guilty in federal court in Manhattan to one count of having illegally acted as an agent of a foreign government. Chun, who was arrested in March 
on a set of charges made public only on Monday admitted in court that from 2011 to 2016 he acted at the direction of a Chinese official to whom he passed sensitive information. The information included the identity and travel plans of an FBI agent, an internal organizational chart, and photos he took of documents in a restricted area related to surveillance technology, said Assistant U.S. Attorney Emil Bove. At the time, I knew that was wrong, and I'm sorry for my actions, said Chun, who was born in China and is a naturalized U.S. citizen. Chun, 46, released on bail following the court hearing, under a plea agreement, he's waived his right to appeal any sentences of 27 months or less. He is scheduled to be sentenced December 2nd. The truth is that Mr. Chun loves the United States and never intended to cause it any harm, Jonathan Marvini, his lawyer, said in a statement. Dude, you're his lawyer. This is what you're supposed to say. He hopes to put this matter behind him and move forward with his life. As long as he spends at least the next 20 years behind bars, I'm okay with him moving forward with his life too. Chun was, in, was initially charged in March for having made false statements in order to conceal his contact with several Chinese nationals and Chinese-based companies. But look, guys, th 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 this is my point. You, you think it's just the politicians. This stuff is permeating our entire lives. We don't have a moral compass anymore. We just don't. If we did, we wouldn't be where we are today. And you can make fun of me for making that statement all you want. It doesn't make it any less true. Somehow, we as a country have lost our way. We have to decide, one, if we're going to find our way again, and two, even if we do, where we're going to point this thing when we do. Because we're headed in the wrong direction. I mean, somebody working for the FBI was passing secrets to China. Hillary Clinton was using an unsecured email server. Let's not forget that email server, and this is something else nobody's really touching on. That email server is probably what led to the death of Ambassador Stevens. Because whatever was going on there, which we're never going to be allowed to know, was so out of the ordinary that it makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up every time I talk about it. There was no reason for that ambassador to be that far away from the embassy. There was no reason for that ambassador to be there in the first place. And yet he was. So why? And why did they come up with this ridiculous narrative about a YouTube video? I feel like I'm watching one of those tail wagging the dog moments where they were giving somebody a video signal or a clue based on what they said in the video. Because YouTube was really prominent, so I'm wondering if that might not have meant something else. Because there's no indication that, that ever happened. There was a YouTube video that sparked everything to do with Benghazi. No indication that ever happened, and yet they kept talking about it over and over and over again. And all because she decided to use an unsecure server that she shouldn't have had in the first place. And you know, that's another thing that honestly really, really chaps me though, is you know, I talked about this in the beginning of the show a little bit when we first started talking about the, the email situation. And all of a sudden you get all these leftists coming out of the woodwork going, well, Bush's, P P Bush's people did the same thing, Rick. And, and so did, and, and so did the first, the first Bushes and so did the Clintons and, and so will whoever this president is, because that's just the way that it's always been, Rick. You're making a big deal out of nothing. Just put the papers somewhere safe. You ain't got to worry about nothing to do with any of that anymore, because simply put, none of it matters. None of it matters. We live in a world where nothing matters anymore. It doesn't matter whether you're right, doesn't matter whether you're wrong, there are no consequences. Hillary Clinton has proved that time and time and time again. 
Over and over and over again, she's called onto the carpet. Time and time again, she walks away from it. She might not have been the one that caused it to happen, but she facilitated it by using an unsecured server. Because there were things on that server that didn't need to be there, and Comey said as much. And then he let her walk. This is why Hillary is bad for America. Because she doesn't know how to make good choices. She's historically... Okay, so I, I misspoke. I, I know there was once a YouTube video, but it was not the cause of the incident was what I meant. Um, somebody pointed out to me in one of the groups that we're in that there actually was a YouTube video. Yeah, I remember because I saw it because it looked like something that I think my five-year-old probably could have done better. Um, just saying. But yeah, so the simple fact of the matter is the, the cause of it was not the YouTube video. That was their excuse, but that wasn't the cause. The cause was whatever Ambassador Stevens was really doing there. Because again, you can't tell me that there was not something shady going on when all of a sudden all hell breaks loose. Somebody's getting dragged through the streets and we're blaming it on a YouTube video. That doesn't make any sense to me. How someone, and, and look, I'll put the blame everywhere at this point because like I said, like I've said last several shows, I'm a man without a party. I'm ready to go to, go to war with both of them because they both stink. They both have skeletons. They both have issues. They have very major problems, both parties, whether you're Democrat or Republican. If you can't look at your party and realize just how broken it is, I'm not sure I can help you. But I want you to understand this was a problem and the fact that this happened and nothing was done to anyone that was involved is insane we just live in a world now where if you're important everything you ever do that's wrong gets swept under the rug if you're too poor it doesn't matter you're gonna have a criminal record for the rest of your life you might as well get ready to go work at McDonald's and look I'm not saying there's anything wrong with working at McDonald's that's not what I mean. But unfortunately, because of the way our legal system works, if you wind up getting caught with anything pretty much anymore, you run a really good risk of getting a felony, which will keep you from getting jobs in most places. Which is why I made the McDonald's reference. I was looking for something here real quick. Bear with me for just a second. Back to the Benghazi thing. Um, this is from the Daily Caller, so I always warn folks when I read from the Daily Caller, take it with a grain of salt, but we're going to read it anyway. Benghazi victim's dad reads out of his diary to prove Hillary lied. Charles Woods, father of slain Benghazi hero Ty Tyrone Woods, blasted Hillary Clinton Tuesday for lying to him and to the American... Uh, it says lying to himself. I'm guessing that's a typo. Uh, Clinton Tuesday for lying to him and to the American people after reading out his, of his diary the remarks Clinton told him at his son's casket ceremony in 2012. Appearing on CNN Newsroom, host Carol Costello asked Woods to respond to Clinton's attempts to discredit the family of the Benghazi victims who have criticized her for blaming a video for the deaths of their children instead of blaming the planned terrorist attack. Well, I know what she said, then it has nothing to do with faulty memory, Woods replied. As you know, I've shown this book to many people. I keep my brains in my pocket and for years I write down the important things that happen during the day and this was written down right after we met with Hillary and it has and so it has nothing to do with a faulty memory and I'll read to you exactly what the conversation was that I had with Hillary 
This is just a couple of days after what happened in Benghazi when the bodies came out. I gave Hillary a hug and shook her hand and she said that we are going to have the filmmaker arrested who is responsible for the death of your son. Now, not only did I write that down, she also told that to other family members and then about a half hour or 45 minutes later, she went on national TV at the casket ceremony and she repeated the same untruth was said. She said, as I recall, rage was directed towards the American embassy as a result of the awful film that we had no part in. So she not only lied to the American people, she also lied to me and to my other family members, Wood said. Yesterday on CNN, Patrick Smith, the mother of Sean Smith, one of the other Americans who was killed in the Benghazi terrorist attack, blasted Clinton, arguing that the former Secretary of State kills people. Last Sunday, in an interview on Fox News Sunday, Clinton attempted to discredit Smith, arguing that she may not fully recall everything that was or wasn't said. So again, folks, I ask you, why is Hillary Clinton good for America? Answer me that question, because I can tell you a million reasons why she's bad. I can tell you a million reasons why she's bad. So let's flip it around. Shoot me an email. Shoot me a Twitter uh, response. Send me a DM. I don't care. I want you, if you're a Hillary supporter, I want, I want you to tell me why you think she's the best choice for the country. Because I'm telling you right now, neither one of the idiots that we're looking at right now is going to be good for the country. I mean, it's pretty sad when the pot smoker is the adult in the room. Let's just let that sink in for a second. And I know... I've been hanging around with a lot of libertarians and they probably don't like the fact that I call Gary Johnson the pot smoker, but it's not like it's not true. The guy basically admits that he imbibes on the the big goods with marijuana in them. And he admits it to everyone because anytime I ever start trying to talk to anybody about Gary Johnson, they start talking about how he he basically gets the stuff off the shelves in Colorado. just insane that the pot smoker is the adult in the room now this this is gonna sound a little crazy but bear with me all right so we already know that in the oval office bill clinton has already had one affair possibly multiple attempts at a single affair who knows But this last round, whether it was the last round or the first round, he pretty much got caught. And he stood there in front of the American people and lied. And we're about to make this man the first gentleman. Now again, I want you to let this sink in. These are the type of people that we're dealing with. They lie as easily as you and I breathe. He stood in front of the world and said and told the world he didn't have any type of sexual relations with Monica Lewinsky. You think it's co- coincidence that both of these two lie like rugs? Now, you might ask, well, Rick, why does it matter what Bill Clinton did 20 years ago? Let me explain. Because in case you missed the memo somewhere, Hillary Clinton is talking about putting Bill Clinton in charge of a lot of the day-to-day runnings of the country. And yet he lies as easily as he breathes. So I'm trying to let all of this sink in. I'm trying to help you paint a picture of exactly where we are, which is not a good place. Because in one corner, you have the criminal. In the other corner, you have the criminally insane. And apparently, we're being told we have to pick one or the other. We do not have a choice. We have to pick one or the other. That's what I keep being told. Doesn't matter that there are certain states that uh, none of which I can think of off the top of my head at the moment have about 16 to different 16 to 17 different choices for president at the top of the ballot. 
My state happens to be completely arcane, so for the first time, and uh, I believe since 2000, they're going to have Libertarian on the ballot. Which is why I'm going to do my part, to make sure that we continue to allow different choices, different ways of thinking, and not everybody cookie cutter. That is what drives me so crazy about walking through most stores and everything else, is all of the cookie cutter approach to everything that we have going on right now. And it's everywhere. We have cookie cutter approach to politics, cookie cutter approach to how stores are run, cookie cutter approach to how everybody gets paid, cookie cutter approach to medical, cookie cutter approach to schools. And it's all because the government gets in the middle of all of it. And Hillary Clinton is going to be at the center of that government if we don't change something. We're seeing it already happening. Everybody keeps telling you how Trump is going to be able to win against Hillary. The polls are already starting to, sh to shift. They're going the other direction. Faster than you and I can watch it happen, they're going the other direction. Doesn't make any sense that we keep making these same decisions over and over and over again, and no matter who we pick, we get screwed. No matter who we pick, we get screwed. Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump, we get screwed. It doesn't matter. We're done. It's toast. It's over. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't. There's no difference between the two of them. They're both big government. They both love the cookie cutter approach. Look at all the way, look at how Donald Trump does business. He's the master of the cookie cutter approach. He goes in, makes a bunch of money, files bankruptcy, leaves everybody holding the bill, moves on to the next project, makes a bunch of money. If it doesn't work, files bankruptcy. You guys thought I was going off the reservation all of a sudden when I started talking about the cookie cutter approach. That's where we are. We have started letting corporations become just as embroiled in our politics as everyday American citizens. And that's bad. That's a terrible thing. We're watching the possibility for the first time ever, the first time ever of this new breed of politician, which would be Donald Trump. Now, everybody talks about Donald Trump and how he's this great businessman and how he's done all these wonderful things and how he's this great guy. Look, if anything, he's not a Democrat, he's not a Republican, he's a corporate. I'm not sure what category Hillary Clinton falls into, but he would basically be the complete blending of corpor corporatism and politics all in one package. Why he terrifies me. And I've outlined as much as I can tonight a lot of the reasons why she terrifies me. Hang on, I just got sent a link. I want to see something. Oh yeah, it's uh, this is from Fox News Politics. Same story we were talking about earlier, uh, just from a different source. Diary entry from Benghazi victim's dad. I gave Hillary a hug. She blamed the filmmaker. So uh, again, folks, I just I, I want you to understand what it is that we're looking at, what it is that we're going to have happen at this point. We are a stone's throw away from putting one of two of the biggest liars that I've ever seen in my life in the White House. And it's insane that we've gotten to this point. It is insane that we've gotten to this point. I don't even know how we got here that nobody's held accountable for anything anymore.
Look, when Jen and I, in the middle of the commercial break the last hour, thumbing through stuff, all of a sudden this story comes up about Donald Trump's campaign website going nuts and not letting people cancel recurring credit card payments to his campaign. And there's apparently no rule, no rule issues with that. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And now we have a Secretary of State who openly lied. Hang on, I'm going to turn up the audio on this. There were some statements worth re-examining. Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Harridge has that story for us tonight. And as I have said, the Select Committee made public new records where Mrs. Clinton wrote immediately after the Benghazi attack that it was terrorism and not connected to an obscure anti-Islam film. Three days later, when the bodies were flown back to Andrews Air Force Base, she told the American people and the victims' relatives something else. We've seen rage and violence directed at American embassies over an awful internet video that we had nothing to do with. The father of former Navy SEAL Ty Woods, who died defending the CIA annex, met with Mrs. Clinton that day and took notes in his calendar. I gave Hillary a hug and shook her hand, Woods wrote, as she said we are going to have the filmmaker arrested who was responsible for the death of my son. But the new select committee records show Mrs. Clinton told her daughter Chelsea, as well as the Libyan president and Egyptian prime minister, it was terrorism with no connection to the film. Either she was lying to the Prime Minister or she was lying to me and to the American public. During the hearing, Mrs. Clinton said there was conflicting intelligence and it was not clear cut. And I believe to this day the video played a role. But Woods, who was at the hearing, said Clinton's apparent lack of candor is an automatic disqualifier for the highest office. In order to follow a leader as a commander in chief, the military needs to trust what their leader says. What are you at the after this heated exchange with his Democratic counterpart, the committee chairman told Fox's Greta Van Susteren the witness interview transcripts will be made public. We're going to release them all because I want folks to see that this is a serious investigation into all aspects of Benghazi. The 11-hour hearing may have provided new tips, even evidence for FBI agents investigating a breach of classified information as well as obstruction of justice, which can include misleading public statements. Mrs. Clinton claimed in March... There is no classified material. But now says nothing was marked, a distinction which is meaningless under the law. There was nothing marked classified on my emails, either sent or received. At a separate hearing Thursday, the FBI director confirmed he is deeply engaged. As you also know about the FBI, we don't talk about our investigations while we're doing them. This is one I'm following very closely and get briefed on regularly. Democrats on the select committee said today they thought the panel should be shut down, but the request has no weight because only the Republican House Speaker has the authority to do so. As long as the select committee exists, the five Democrats say they will continue to participate. Brett? Catherine, thank you. All right, so that was from about nine months ago, and at this point, that is all basically been concluded. You heard Comey talking really tough right there. And then he folded like a house of cards, big surprise. Now, something that was brought to my attention on last week's uh, Finding Common Ground, and I'm going to go back and I'm going to find that clip because I'm a little disturbed by something. And I wanted to touch on that on the way out tonight because it'll probably be part of an upcoming story here, Um, is the fact that um, the head of that committee the one that started it all, that said he was going to get to the bottom of it, actually months later told the world that there were no assets in, near, or around Benghazi at the time of the incident. I know for a fact, if the if the accounts that we got were true, that that can't be true. So I'm going to start looking into that, and I want to know why he suddenly backpedaled. Because right there, you heard him talk about all of the, the in little snippets, all of the terrible things that they were that they were finding, and then all of a sudden, by the time it was all over, there there was nothing there. There was no fault. It was a miscommunication. They thought an evacuation was under the way because there were no other assets in near or around Benghazi. Look, I know that's not true because they could have had an RDF force there within ninety minutes. I have friends in the military. I know how this stuff works. There's no way that there would have been someone standing on the top of the annex building or wherever he was standing with a laser designator shining it down on targets and exposing himself unless there was a platform in range because they won't actuate unless there is. 
So why did Gaudi lie? I'm telling you folks, we're being played on all sides. And I for one have had enough. I don't want Hillary Clinton in office and I don't want Bill Clinton or Bill Clinton behind the scenes in office and I sure as hell don't want Trump or his wife. Or Pence for that matter. Who apparently is gonna be the one running the country while Donald Trump's out brand building like he always does. All right, well, on that note, folks, we have got to get out of here. I've got to make room for the Rhino Report coming up next. If you're listening to us live, stay tuned. Rhino Report is up next. It is a replay. He didn't send us a fresh episode today, but uh, stay tuned for it anyway if you choose. If you are listening to us anywhere else, including AMFM247.com, RedNationRisingRadio.com, uh, SHRMedia.com, and uh, other affiliates, check your listings, and I'll see you when I see you. On that note, folks, we are out of here. You have a great night. God bless. And I know I was kind of all over the map tonight, but it was just one of those shows where every time I thought I was going in one direction, it went somewhere else on me. Anyway, I hope you hung tough, and I'll be back with you tomorrow night. We'll finish up the segment on Hillary. I'll try to have that one a little bit better prepared.